Good evening, Refuge Church family and friends. I'm excited to be with you tonight and share a message. Before we even get started, I know we're just all probably a little uh, crazy right now with all the events that are going on. Let's just stop for just a moment and join me as I open us up with prayer to start off this night. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just ask that the Holy Spirit be poured out all over this message tonight, God, and it calms people. And Lord, we can fix our eyes on you. And God, in everything that we do, we'll bring you glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to welcome you tonight. We want to give you some information as we're getting started. Before I get into the meat of the message tonight, I want to give you uh, some things that we got going on and, and give you some announcements and everything else. First, we want to say that we are having church right now. I know we only got uh, a couple of us here tonight, but I thought I'd start us off with a little bit of laughter tonight. And you can see up here on the screen right now that, uh, hey, we're two or more gathered, but less than 10, we're having church. And so we're having church tonight. And uh, I've got my wife back in the back helping out with the video, and our children's minister, Ann, is up here helping as well. And so, uh, needless to say, this has been a crazy week. Uh, there's a lot of fear, a lot of confusion, a lot of worry, and a lot of anxiety in our world right now, but we are still moving forward. And there's a couple of things I want to share with you that we're going to have going on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be back this Friday to give you an announcement uh, video to let you know what we got going on on Sundays, but I can go ahead and tell you right now uh, that on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we'll have a virtual lesson with our kids. Uh, Ian is going to be going live from our Refuge Kids page at 10 a.m. To, to give our kids a Sunday school lesson and uh, just to, to kind of minister to them. Uh, we'll be doing our regular thing at 11 a.m. on our church page right here where you're watching, and then at five, I'm sorry, at 6 p.m. on Sunday night, our youth group will be doing a lesson on, on Facebook Live as well from their page, Refuge Church Youth Group. And I will give you all of that information as the time draws near. You don't really have to remember it right now, uh, but it's, uh, it's coming up this Sunday. We're very excited. And we also want you to know that if you have any questions, if you have any needs, food, water, hygiene, medication, anything right now, you can send us an email at office.refugechurch at gmail.com. We want to get that information uh, from you so that we can get the supplies out to you. And we want to be able to help people out in this time. Uh, and I know uh, that, uh, as I said, we're not able to meet on, uh, on our regular times with, a, with a, a church full of folks right here. But we're still trying to minister to the needs of this community, and you can still give to support this ministry. So before I get into my message tonight, let me just remind you of all the different ways that you can give. Up on your screen, you see this. If you have our Refuge mobile app downloaded, you can give through that simply by clicking on the Give tab. You can also text uh, just from your phone, just send the message, Silver Refuge, that's one word. If you'll text that word, to the number 77977. As soon as that text message goes through, you'll receive a link to click on. If you will click on that link and follow the prompts, uh, you can give. It's safe, it's fast, and it's easy. And Or also, listen, for those of you that are a little more old school and you like to just uh, send your check-in uh, as your tithe, you can continue to mail that to us at P.O. Box 872, Dillsborough, North Carolina, 28725. And we want to continue... Uh, to be able to take whatever we're able to get from you, whatever support we get, and put it fully behind this effort to fight the coronavirus in our community and to meet the needs of those uh, in our community. I know that it has overtaken our lives. We see so much of it on social media. It's hard to, to, to tell the difference between fact and fiction and all this hysteria going on and panic buying and social distancing. The news channels give us mixed messages all the time. I mentioned it on Sunday. I can watch one channel for five minutes, and I, and I can tell very easily, you love Trump, and you're giving me the news. You love Trump, and you're giving me the news. And then I'll flip it over to the other channel, and it's very easy to tell that you hate Trump, and you're giving me the news. You hate Trump, and you're giving me the news. And you get all these mixed messages. And so we know that that's true. And you know exactly what I'm talking about if you watch any kind of 24-hour news channels. And so now more than ever, we need to do what really has become our idea for this year as we continue to press forward. And it's this right here on the screen. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus and we need to just be obedient to what he's telling us to do in our lives and what he's calling us to do in our lives. And this world it has 
completely come to a standstill. And I know that there are going to be some more measures put in place for us as a state and as a community in the days to come. We're going to be flexible with that. But more than likely, we're going to get this order to just stay at home. To just stay at home and stay away from folks for a couple of weeks so this virus can pass. And I, and I know that we're going to be forced to do this. And so where else can we look than to Jesus during this time? We need to fix our eyes on him. And listen, we can see how quickly our hope and our dependence on this world comes to a screeching halt. When we look to everything else in this world, how quickly it can all end. And in the midst of this, on Sunday, we shared with you a message about all the different ways that we can reach in the days and the weeks to come and all the, certain, all the different things we want to do in the days and the weeks to come. And we, and we encouraged you on Sunday, three different ways to reach during this time. First and foremost, to reach up in prayer and to reach up through Bible study and devotions by seeking God's will and seeking His way in everything that we do. Number one, we need to reach up and connect with God through Jesus Christ. Then we want to reach into our families to our church family, to our immediate families. What a great opportunity this is for us to reset our lives and get our priorities back in order. I believe God's going to work just crazy through this in our churches and in our families. And then we want to reach out to our community, to those that maybe are apart from the church and that we know are our friends and our coworkers and people that are in need. We want to reach out to them and we want to help them during this time. And so tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this first place that we need to reach and that is reaching up, and through this, and only through reaching up, and, and just cementing that relationship with God through Jesus, will we find this idea, it's our title tonight, and it's right here on the screen, it's called Finding Peace in the Chaos. Only when we reach up, and we call out to Jesus, can we really find peace in this chaos, and I know that there are so many of us, when we think of our lives, and we think of everything that's going on, there's a couple of words that come to mind for me as I prepared this message this week, and maybe you can kind of just identify where you're at tonight. There's a word called contentment, and I wonder how many of us would think that that's, that's what really uh, defines our life right now. It, 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 it means literally being at peace with who you are and where you are, and this idea of finding peace, and, and listen, I wonder if we looked at ourselves, if we really looked at the reflection of who we are, if this word is anywhere in our life, because the opposite of this contentment is discontentment. This is when we have no peace. And we may be discontent for a number of reasons right now. I mean, our world is literally upside down. Everything that's going on is very tough to find any contentment. It's hard to find contentment in the world. And we want you to find it here tonight. We want to share this with you tonight. And I want to start off with our first point before we even look at Scripture. If you want to find peace in the chaos, understand this right here. Number one tonight is this, is that God is giving us the opportunity during this time to rest in Him and find peace. This is, I mean, He's putting it on a silver platter for us to just seek Him and find this peace in Him when everything around us seems to be going crazy, when everything is chaotic. We have got to find peace in Him, but we've got to humble ourselves and admit that we need that peace. Because if we don't do that, nothing's going to change in our lives. And, and when, when nothing changes in our life, we're going to get through this. Listen, this is going to pass. This time is going to pass. We're going to get back to our normal lives, whatever that means in a little while, whatever that looks like for you. This too is going to pass. And if we don't do things differently and begin to rest in God and trust in Him and in His promises, we're going to get right back on that same treadmill or that rat race that we've been in before, and nothing is going to change. And we want to encourage you to use this time to really press into God and find peace in Him because you cannot find it in the world right now. You're not going to find it anywhere right now. So we're going to start off looking at one verse tonight, and it's a very popular verse of Scripture, but the problem is, is that many people take it out of context. They take it out of context, and they also don't believe in the power behind it as well. And this verse is found in the book of Philippians, Philippians 4.13. And this is what the Bible says, that for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Now for too many, when they read this, they put an asterisk beside it. They say, you know, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength except face my fears. I can't do that. 
I can do all things through Christ except deal with my finances. I've got to handle that on my own, and I don't even know how I'm going to handle it during this time. I'm out of work. I got laid off this week. I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. I can do all things through Christ except make my marriage work. You're about to have an opportunity to make that marriage work because you and your wife are probably going to be spending a lot of time at home. It's a great time to reconnect and to allow Christ to strengthen that union between you and your wife. I can do all things through, through Christ except become a better husband or a better parent or maybe even overcome my addiction. See, we don't, we don't rely on the strength of Christ to help us overcome these things. Because too often, we put an asterisk beside it. And then there's so many people that take it out of context, and they think, well, I can do anything I want because Jesus is going to give me the strength to do it. That's not what he's talking about. That's not what Paul is talking about when he writes this scripture. He's talking about finding contentment in all that we do through Christ. And we need to believe this. We need to humble ourselves and admit that we need the strength of Christ to achieve peace in our lives, because we won't find it any other way. And at least our second point tonight, which is simply this, is that peace begins through a relationship with Jesus and by trusting the Holy Spirit. We have to have a relationship with Jesus and trust in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And in this passage of Scripture, we're going to read right here just a, a, a little bit of context as we look at this tonight. Jesus knew that he was not going to be able to be with his followers forever. He knew at some point he was going to be going back to be with his father. And so in this passage of Scripture, he's comforting them. And he's ministering to them. And he's trying to tell them this right here. We find it in John chapter 14, beginning in verse 25. The Bible says this, and it's in red because these are the words of Jesus. He says, I'm telling you these things now while I'm still with you. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. We have to trust in the Holy Spirit and all the things that Jesus has told us. In verse 27, He says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And look at this last part, and this is so relevant to our situation that we're going through in the world right now. The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. This peace that comes through Jesus, we cannot find it in our world. We see all of the things that we idolize, that we put up on a pedestal that seem so important to us, how quickly they can all go away, and they have. Our world has changed literally almost overnight and we can't find peace, and we try to seek it in so many areas other than Jesus. We need to press into Him during this time and trust Him. And sometimes, listen, even in, even in good things, we have a hard time sometimes. We idolize these things, and they can't bring us peace unless we have a relationship with Jesus, and unless we're being led by the Holy Spirit. Things like marriage. Listen, your marriage, I mentioned it a little while ago, you're about to find out how strong it is, or how weak it is. You're about to find out how much when you and your wife or your, your spouse, you get a chance to spend that time together now. And, and listen, you're about to find out what it's really all about. And I would encourage you, I would encourage you as you get this reset in your life right now. So many times we've had these opportunities and so many times we've said these things. Hey, I'm going to start praying with my family. I'm going to start spending more time with my wife. I'm going to open my Bible up. I'm going to become a better husband. I'm going to be a better wife. I'm going to do this. Listen, you can't do it in your own strength. You need the guidance of the Holy Spirit to do that. Certainly during this time, we know that money is not going to bring us peace. I mean, listen, I know that we're all at a place, and we're praying for those of you right now that, that, that may not be able to have your regular income, and you may be getting, as I mentioned, laid off. And, and listen, but I'll tell you this, and we've learned this in the past, like we can never get enough to be at peace. We can never get enough to be at peace with it. Our career, all these things, all these things we mentioned are good, but they don't bring lasting peace. And then there's some things we look to for peace that they bring us anything but peace. They're absolutely harmful. There's a lot of you out there tonight, maybe you're watching this, and, and, and maybe because you're shut in during this time and you don't have the opportunity to get out and socialize with your friends, that, that drinking or that drug addiction Maybe you're bringing it in the home now. And let me, just, let me just tell you that we're praying for you, that you'll use this time to separate yourself from those things that are bringing harm to your life 
and to really just focus on Jesus during that time because you might think you can numb the pain, but it, listen, it's not going to go away. It's not going to go away. And then a lot of us get angry, and maybe we find ourselves angry tonight at the situation that our world is in, but it doesn't do us any good. Real peace only comes through Jesus, not in the things of this world. We've seen more than ever in the past month or so here, just in our community and beyond, and all of the things that are going on around our world, it's heartbreaking, yes, but we see this, that all of these things that we, that we think are so important, they're just, they're fleeing and they're temporary. They're temporary. And they can't sustain us. They make terrible gods. <laughs> They may be great tools in our life or great relationships in our life and things that we can use, but these things can't be our God. It can only, peace can only come through a relationship with Jesus and by trusting in the Holy Spirit. We've got to trust in Him. And if we're going to maintain this peace in our life, let me just close out with this last point tonight. Number three is this, is that this peace that we find through Jesus, it's sustained in the chaos by remaining in and remaining with Jesus, abiding in him, staying with him, it's not a one-time thing. We know that the gift of salvation is, and when we come to know Jesus and we surrender our lives to him, that is a one-time thing, but, but surrendering to him and living our lives for him and trusting in him, it's an everyday thing. It's an everyday thing, and now more than ever, when we wake up in the morning, we need to, we need to take that moment and, and, and realize, hey, God, I don't know what this day may bring. Our situation and our circumstances, they are changing every day. And I don't know about you, but I know this. I wake up in the mornings, and I go outside, and I'll have my quiet time, and I'll, I'll open up my Bible, and I'll start reading it a little bit, and I'll spend some time in prayer. And it hits me by the time I get downstairs every morning, and I make my way outside. Oh, yeah, this is what's going on in our world right now. I mean, it's usually peaceful around 6 a.m. around my house, but like it's even more so now. And even throughout the day, it's not quite as noisy and there's not quite as much going on. And I got to remember what's going on in this world and that I can't trust anything that's going on in this world because it can all be taken away from us in a moment. But I can trust in Jesus and I'm going to surrender every day. It's why we encourage you to seek him daily and trust in him daily to grow in your relationship with him. And you need to understand this, and you need to know this tonight, and this is me as your pastor just speaking my heart to you tonight. Listen, and I want you to hear me out when I say this next point right here. It is okay to be afraid right now. It's okay to feel a little bit of fear, to feel a little bit of uncertainty, to feel a little bit of anxiety about our own health maybe with all of this that's going on, about our finances because we're unsure of what the future holds. It's okay to feel those things. Just don't keep them inside. Put them at the foot of Jesus. Put them at the foot of the cross and pour them out. The Bible says to put all of our anxieties on him. He can handle it. That's what he did for us on the cross. We don't have to carry that burden. We can trust in him and we can seek him every day. He said as much to his followers in this very well-known passage of Scripture, our last passage tonight, Matthew chapter 16, beginning in verse 24. The Bible says that Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you'll save it. Think about what's going on in your life right now and trying to hang on to the things of this world and how it, literally every day things feel like they're just slipping through our fingers and we don't know what tomorrow holds. We might lose those things, but if you give up our lives for the sake of Jesus and following him, you'll save it. And then in the last verse there says, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Nothing, nothing is worth more than your soul. We've got to set aside the things of this world and make Jesus our foundation in everything that we do. All the things in this world don't matter if we don't have him. And right now, I think that I think so many people their eyes are being opened to the power of the gospel and the power of a relationship with Jesus. And, and just we're look like, I, I've said it so many times, hey, in my own life, I didn't look up to God until I was flat on my back. Right now, there's a lot of you watching this. You might be flat on your back, and the only place you got to look is God. And he might be saying to you, I got you right where I want you. Now is the time to surrender and to just sustain this peace that only comes through Jesus. And listen, 
If we don't set aside the things of this world and make Jesus our foundation, all of these other things are going to go away. It, it'll profit us nothing in the end if we don't have Jesus as our foundation. And I want to tell you, and I want to encourage you, and I want to, I want to let you know tonight, my heart tonight, listen, it is a daily struggle. Jesus didn't say, hey, just wake up and cruise through the day and follow me. I'll take you wherever you need to go. He said, pick up your cross daily and follow me. Die to yourself each day. It's a struggle to do that. But we've, we've seen in Scripture, listen, we press on one day at a time. Often, especially in times like now, it's not even one day at a time. It's one step at a time. It's one moment at a time, one hour at a time. With the uncertainty of everything that's going on, we've got to understand that we've got to follow him and trust him. And in order, in, in order to find sustaining peace, that's what we have to do. And it's our choice tonight. And it's our choice in the days to come, and the weeks to come, and who knows, maybe the months to come. We can either find contentment in Christ, or we can find worry in the world. And I would encourage you to find contentment in Christ. Find it tonight. Because if we go back to the very first verse that we looked at tonight, and we put it in its proper context, Philippians 4.13, we put it in its proper context, I want you to think of the things that Paul is saying to the church right now, beginning in, in, in verse 8 of Philippians chapter 4. This is what he says. Dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, and this is why tonight I'm making this my final thing. This is my final thought tonight for you as we pr get prepared to close this out in just a couple of moments. One final thing. This is for all of us in the days to come. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then, then the God of peace will be with you. Do these things and the God of peace will be with you. Verse 10 goes on and says this. How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. I, I think of that verse right there and I think about what we're going to be doing. We're concerned about our people right now. We're going to continue to reach out to them. And we have a chance to do that right now. And verse 11 says, not that I was ever in need for I have learned. This is what he says. Listen, I've learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation. We need to learn that secret tonight of learning in every situation. Because I'm telling you, and you know this, and I know this, and we know it's true tonight. We have never seen a situation like what we're in right now in this world. He says, I've learned the secret of living in every situation. Whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little put it in its proper context i can do everything through christ who gives me strength if we do the things he mentioned and we find real peace in those things and we put them into practice allow god to sustain us then the god of peace will be with us then we can find peace no matter what is going on around us through him we have strength for whatever this world throws at us. We can find contentment no matter what's going on in our world. And so tonight, listen, it's your choice. Your choice tonight is to find peace and contentment in Jesus Christ or continue to look to our ever-changing world and just be filled with worry and anxiety and fear and doubt, perhaps depression. And I just want to give you this opportunity right now because we've got folks back in the back right now and they're interacting with you. Maybe tonight you need to surrender your life to Jesus. And if you need to do that, you can send us a message. You can, you can let us know right now if you're watching this live. If you say, listen, I, I'm tired of worrying about the world. I want to surrender my life to Jesus right now. And we'll pray for you. We'll get back in contact with you. We're doing church in a whole different way now, y'all. This is just the way it is. This is the way it is. I wish right now I could reach out and touch 
people and give them a high five and I could pray with people and I could lay hands on people and I could do all of these things, but we don't have that opportunity right now. But we can be with you in spirit and God is with you right now and he hears your prayers just like you're in here right now. And if you need to surrender to him and if you're filled with worry, if we can pray with you in any way, you let us know and we will do that. We are going to do everything we can in the days and the weeks and maybe even the months to come to stay in contact with you, to reach out to you, to pray for you, to meet your needs, to show you the power of Christ and continue to shine his light in a very dark time right now in our world. We're going to do that, and we encourage you to do it as well. You won't find peace anywhere but through Jesus. And we encourage you tonight to do that, man. I, just, I wish I could just reach through the screen and tell every single one of you, find peace in Christ and pray with you right now. And I'm going to close out in prayer. And Normally, a lot of times we may in the video before we close in prayer. But I'm going to pray, and I'm praying for those of you that are watching right now, that you're filled with worry and anxiety, that the God of peace will be with you as you fix your eyes on Jesus. And as I close out in prayer, once I say amen, we're stopping the tape. But you have an opportunity to reach out to us if you need to. You can reach out. You can let us know what's going on in your world and in your life. And we're going to be there for you because we love you. And we love you because God first loved us. And so let's pray. And then we'll close this out tonight. Father God, we want to come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord, and we lift up Jesus above every situation that this world is facing right now, God. We lift up the name of Jesus above it all. God, and as we do that, we pray that the Holy Spirit will be poured out upon so many lives, God, and they would begin to trust in you and walk in that strength each day, God, to find that contentment that only comes with you. Father, I believe that your word tonight that's been put forth and it's out there right now, God, it's, it's impacting lives, God, because it's you. It's your word. God, so have your will in people's lives tonight, God. Let them trust in you. Let us reach out to one another during this time, God, by whatever means that we can, by a phone call, a text message, a, a Facebook message, God, whatever, whatever it takes to reach our world and to share with them the peace that we have in Christ during this crazy time. Because, God, we know that you're still in control. You're on the throne, God. And so we place our trust in you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share your word, to shine this light of the gospel into people's lives. And as we close out tonight, God, until we can get back together again via Facebook or whatever it is, we're going to continue to give you glory in all that we do. And we ask it all tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and have a great evening. We'll be... We'll be back real soon.